Welcome. This video will be me sharing a part of my experience that I hope you could find beneficial. So the objective of uh, today's sharing is to show you how I can actually grab Instagram account details like followers, the statistics, the media posts. And uh, to start off, I'll let you know that actually I have a GitHub repository which is written all in plain JavaScript, a uh, plain function that you can actually use to do that. We will be using the V8 Graph API, Facebook login. And from there, we will get the Instagram information. I'll start off by actually showing you what does the uh, example of this application does. So first, I log in my Facebook using the V8 Graph API and a Facebook login. So I log in my personal account. And in my personal account, I actually have a Facebook page that I link to it, which is called the Test Sean Market. As you can see, once I log in my Facebook account, I can grab the IDs, the name, the email through the VA Graph API of the Facebook account. And from there, I can actually grab my uh, page related account, for example, Sean Market. You can see I grab the access token, the business account. And I also can actually just uh, call the Graph API if I explicitly just want to grab a, a business account from the Facebook page that I have. And from there, I actually get my uh, Instagram information, like my biography, how many followers I have, how many followers I do make, my Instagram ID, my name, my profile picture, etc. You can actually get more than that, but I only choose to uh, put these fields in. You can, of course, uh, put more fields if you want to. Then from there, I can actually get the Instagram profile insights. Like what are my impressions for the day values? You can see the impressions uh, based on the day. I just use the default one, but you can change as well. As you can see, I'm not so popular, so I have zero. And then you can also see your reach, how many views today. Yep. And then we also have another part, which is the Instagram post, as mentioned earlier. Yeah, so these are actually the stuff that I actually post. So you can see the URL, the likes, and uh, if I enable comment or disable it, yeah. then you can as well see the how many likes. And you can actually see the comments. So, so, so yeah, these are the comments that I have. You can see I'm not so popular, but I'm just doing a test here. So hope you can follow, yeah. And right now, I actually start with uh, telling you what you need to do before you can actually get all of this. The first thing you need to do, of course, is you need to have a, a Facebook application. And you can see once you've done your Facebook application, you need to fill in uh, and link all the other accounts. You can read all this in the uh, Facebook manual. As you know, there's a term saying RTFM, read the fucking manual. <laughs> But maybe in this case, read a Facebook manual. Yep, so I'll just go through and walk by very slowly. I actually created this app, so I don't mind actually sharing some of the information here. It's just for testing. Yeah, so you can see I have some rows here. If you want to add in uh, more administrators, you can do that. If you want to add in uh, more testers, more users, you can do that as well. This section is actually all the permission that you can request. But of course, you only uh, request the ones that you need to use and the ones that uh, your application relies on. I think the next part is the most crucial part. So if you haven't already, you need to actually add the Facebook uh, products. So in this case, I had actually added the Facebook login. And then you add them, you actually walk through the step of uh, going through copying the initializations, the initialization scripts and whatnot. And in this example today, I will just use localhost for 200. So as you can see, I only put localhost for 200 as my valid redirect URI. 
and you can also notice that I'm using HTTPS because I enable this to have uh, more security. And then these are just some of the basic settings which I did not touch. Now I will show you the Facebook page that I created. As you can see, it's also just a, a dummy page that I just created to link to my Facebook account for testing. And in my Instagram application, in my mobile app, I actually link my uh, personal Instagram account to this page. But after that, I changed my uh, personal Instagram account to become a business account. It is free and it's quite easy. You just need to read the manual. Yeah. So essentially, for all of this to work, you first need and you first need a Facebook application. And in the Facebook application, you need to have all the settings done, ready, fill in, at the products. And then uh, you have to make sure you have the correct redirect URI. Maybe you have some website you need to place it here. So it registers as a valid uh, URI. Then next part, if you want to have a test account, probably you can create a Facebook account, which has a, a test Facebook page. And in this test Facebook page, you should have a Instagram business user that is actually linked to this page. Yeah. So for now, I will just jump straight right into the code. The code actually does this one. The example that we see earlier. I will go through step by step. And this actually is quite simple. It's all just plain uh, JavaScript. You just need to change the parameters like the fields, your application ID, and your client token. So to start off, you actually need to clone this repository. So after you clone this, uh, you need to do install. I think it's quite standard. I only install one library, which is the HTTP server. So it's quite fast. And then because we are using HTTPS on localhost, we just need to run this certification command. And this certification command will actually generate a dummy uh, cert. In this case, I just uh, didn't feel anything because I'm just using it for testing. After we've done that, you will realize that this certificate is generated. Then the next step would be to run the npm run start. So when you run the npm start, you actually just serve your uh, static assets over localhost uh, 4200. I'm more comfortable with the keyword localhost as I have a place localhost as my valid in the URI. So I'll just do this. And then I'll just go through it because it's just testing, so it's okay to proceed. Then I'll go in the example. Take this one. Once again, I will log in. And if you are first time logging in, you probably see a lot of settings that allow you to choose which Facebook page that you want to link. So I actually link my dumb, dummy page here. Yeah, so once again, after I log in with the Facebook graph API, Facebook login API. I will get all this information from this repository that I actually have here. If you look at this plain HTML that I have, you have different sections that I print the information out from the response of the Facebook graph. Yeah. So everything actually is inside this simple JavaScript file. As you can see, I'm not using anything fancy. I'm just using a fetch. But you can, of course, use some library like jQuery or Axios if you want to. But I didn't do that. And then the rest of the uh, operations are actually from the Facebook manual. I just change the parameter. I think the most important thing is to know the right parameter to pass inside, the right setting to do it, and the right function to call in the sequence. Uh, to start off, you see I've hard-coded some, some uh, permissions. 
because these are the permissions that actually I will be using. So if you don't want to touch, you can just copy this. And then now I move back to the static HTML that we have. Uh, we will start off by looking at the script. You will notice that I have this first function. This first function actually doesn't do much. It just print everything into the DOM. Because I want to see what other data that I get from the graph. So I just write this function. But you can have something else if you want. And then I import every uh, functions that I have here, which is quite straightforward. It's just a normal function. And these are the part you need to change, the application ID and the client token. So probably your question would be, where can I get the application ID? I will show you how you can get application ID. It's actually quite straightforward. For the application ID, you will see it here. And for the token, you can go to settings, at once. Settings, at once on the left side. I'm using V8, and then I just copy this client token. I don't mind to share because I'm just using it for testing. If you want to use it, it's fine as well. But I will probably change this uh, in the future. Yeah. So you can see I start off by actually calling this function, but actually we don't need I'm just showing you it's possible to do that if you want to. Uh, the most important thing is actually to get a Facebook account. So uh, what's more important, if you can look at this, it's actually a function which is called login success. Before we look into all this detail, we are actually having a main function called login success. And we also have a main function called login fail. I did not do anything with the fail, I just have an empty function. But in the login success function, you will see a parameter named respond item. This respond item actually is when a user log in Facebook, and if the login successful, you get the respond. So we we see that the next few lines, we only need to do these things like uh, initialize the application ID, the client token, the login success function callback, the login failure function callback, and then we uh, call the function. In what we so if let's say we log in successfully we will get a response item and when, when you get the response item we actually get the user id information the access token so in this part you can see first part we need to do is we need to get our facebook account information and to get this facebook account information we actually have a script here and if we look at the script, it's just calling the Facebook Graph API. If you want to get the ID, name, email, you can have more fields, you can change if you want to. Then we call the app operation. And once we get the Facebook account information, from the successful login, we pass in the user ID access token as parameter. And as a response result, we get the Facebook account information here. Then we will just print it in the DOM. If you look at this one, so this is where you would see in the section number one, this is where we get our Facebook account information, we get our ID, our name, our email. So after we get that account information, we can actually get uh, the page that is linked to it. In this case, I'll show you. Yeah, as you can see, I also take the same response from the successful login, pass in the ID, the access token. Then I'll take the response from this function. And if you look at this function, actually call this graph service. From here, I can get the Instagram business account if I want to. And once I get the response, I just print it out. Then you will see that the next thing I do is I want to get the Facebook. Uh, page business account. So what I do is I call this function, and you can see that, yeah, I will just do the same thing but with different URL and different fields. Once I get the field, once again I just print it out, and once I get the Instagram business account ID, I actually can get the 
Instagram information by calling the graph API. And then I can get a profile inside. I can get a post. Yeah, so actually it's quite simple. Once you figure this out, it's actually quite simple. Yeah, so that's all. I hope you have a good time trying out this. If you have any question and if I can help, I'll definitely be uh, willing to help. So have a good day. Bye.